In this section, I'm going to talk about the different types of problem that you have in working out the pressure loss associated with turbulent pipe flow. And I'm going to talk through the ways in which you um, solve each of these different types of problem. So um, we've already derived in this lecture um, that the pressure loss um, associated with pipe flow for laminar and turbulent pipe flow is um, this friction factor, which is a function of Reynolds number and um, relative pipe roughness. And I've showed you how you can um, determine that from the Moody diagram or also alternatively, there's equations you can use to calculate this. So it's the friction factor, the length of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe, density of the fluid, and also the velocity of the fluid. And there are three different types of problem and three different um, ways that you need to go about solving it. Now I should stress in this section, I'm just going to talk um, about the actual method and it perhaps won't be too helpful on its own, just a description of how to solve them. What you, the best way to um, understand how to do this is to have a look at the worked um, examples because it's much easier to demonstrate this by example than just explaining it outright. But I will do that just here, so please have a look at the, the worked examples as well. But your first um, type of problem is where you have an unknown pressure drop. Okay, So we're just trying to find out the thing on the left-hand side of this equation. So in this instance, we're likely to know the, the flow rate and the diameter. So therefore, it's quite easy to find um, the pressure loss. And I'll talk about that um, on the next slide. In type 2 um, problem, we have an unknown flow rate. So if we know the pressure drop and the diameter, then we need to find the flow rate. To find the flow rate, we need to find the velocity. But this causes a problem because if we don't know the velocity, we can't find the Reynolds number, we can't find the friction factor. So we get stuck in a bit of a loop. In terms for our type three problem, if uh, is where we don't know the pipe diameter, so we know the pressure loss and um, the flow rate, so the velocity, but we don't know the diameter. Now, if we don't know the diameter, we can't find the Reynolds number or the relative pipe roughness. So we can't find the friction factor, so we can't find the pressure loss, and so on and so on. So it's more complicated problem. But just dealing with um, type 1 problem first. So type 1 problem is fairly straightforward. If we know the um, pipe diameter and um, the volumetric flow rate, and all we need to do is calculate the pressure drop, then if we know the diameter and the volumetric flow rate, we can calculate Reynolds number because we know the velocity um, from the volumetric flow rate and diameter. We can also calculate the relative pipe roughness. From that, we can find or calculate the friction factor from the Moody diagram or from um, the equations. Once we have that, then we can plug the values into the darcy Weisbach equation to calculate delta P. And that's fairly um, straightforward. The type two problem is a little bit more um, complicated because if we know the pressure drop and the pipe diameter, then we, and we need to find the flow rate, then the problem is that we don't know the velocity. If we don't know the velocity, then we can't determine the Reynolds number. And if we can't determine the Reynolds number, we can't find the friction factor. So how do we do it? Well, the way that you need to do it is you need to assume full turbulence, that the flow is fully turbulent. Because if you recall from um, earlier in the lecture, I showed you that in the fully turbulent regime, the friction factor is independent of the Reynolds number. It's only dependent on um, the relative pipe roughness. So what you do is you assume it's fully turbulent, um, calculate a friction factor, which then allows you to calculate um, the pressure drop. You can find the velocity and iterate around um, as necessary. So just to kind of show you um, that on a flow chart. So what you do is from your pressure drop and your diameter, you can calculate your relative roughness, pipe roughness. Assume that it's fully turbulent, so you don't need the Reynolds number. You find the friction factor. From the friction factor, you can then, um, using the darcy Weisbach equation, calculate the velocity. Now, you've already made an assumption that, um, so once you've got the velocity, you can then calculate the Reynolds number. Now, you've assumed fully turbulence here. So once you've determined the Reynolds number, you can check whether your original assumption of being fully turbulent was correct or not. If it is, great, then you can use um, the velocity to calculate the mass flow rate and so on. If not, then your original assumption was wrong. So what you do is you can determine a new friction factor 
using the Reynolds number that you determined and the pipe roughness that you already have. You then calculate a new velocity, calculate a new Reynolds number, and you keep going around this until the velocity doesn't change very much. And you just keep iterating around, iterating around until you converge on the solution. And eventually you reach a point where, um, as you go around, the velocity isn't changing much from each one iteration to the next, and you've converged onto your solution. For the type 3 problem, it's a bit more tricky again, because if you know the um, the pressure loss and the volumetric flow rate, then by implication you don't know the diameter, and that's what you need to find. And if you don't know the diameter, then you can't calculate either the Reynolds number or the relative pipe roughness. So you can't find, um, it's really hard to find the friction factor. So the way that you solve this is you first of all start by assuming that the friction factor is um, 0.03. Why do you do that? Well, it's right in the middle of the Moody diagram. Okay. And then what you do is you, once you've got a, um, a new, once you assume this friction factor, you then work out um, a pipe diameter. With that pipe diameter, you then work out a Reynolds number and a velocity and so on. And you keep iterating around until you, um, uh, so you keep going around iterating until you converge on the solution. So again, it's easier to show you in a in a flow chart. So if you know the so if you know the pressure drop and the volumetric flow rate to start off with, then you can't find the friction factor. So you guess what it is and guess that it's 0 0.03, which as I say is, is pretty much in the center of the Moody diagram. From that, you can calculate the um, the diameter of the um, uh, the pipe from the Darcy Weisbach equation. Okay, because you have everything, you can calculate the diameter. Um, you then need to check that your kind of original assumption is right, or you know check that you're in the right sort of ballpark. So you calculate a Reynolds number and a relative pipe roughness from your diameter, and you determine a new F. Now, if that, if you determine a new F and friction factor, and your friction factor was 0 0.03, then great, you've you um, you know you don't need to go any f further. But if it's not, then what you need to do is you need to new use that new friction factor to calculate a new diameter, to then calculate a new Reynolds number and pipe roughness to determine a new F. If that uh, new friction factor is still a long way from your previous iteration, then you need to go round again. And you keep going round and round and round again until your friction factor between iterations doesn't change very much. And like with the type 2 problem, if the, it hasn't changed much from one iteration to the other, then you've converged upon your solution. As I said at the beginning of this section, it <clears throat> probably won't make um, a great deal of sense what I've just told you, but that is the way to do it. But the best way is through examples. So please have a look at the associated worked examples and hopefully that will clarify what I've said in this section. Okay, thank you very much um, for listening to my lecture. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.